Welcome back, everybody. Welcome to the show. It's Tuesday Muse Day. My studio is crashing down. <laughs> it was part of my light that just fell off over there. Welcome. I'm creating this music in honor of the weather event that we're having here. Um, 30 minutes ago, we got a flash flood warning. Uh, and I'm, you know, not in a flash flood kind of area. But uh, it's great to have the rain. That's what this, uh, that's what this music is about. And I'll show you the instruments I'm using in a, in a minute. But right now I just wanted to say welcome. Thanks for being here. We've, I've got so much for you. We're gonna hear from Andrew Toy, a drummer who does some crazy stuff with live looping and effects. I got a mini interview with him I'm gonna play for you. We've got a rhythm game that's really cool. Um, it's kind of uh, in the mood, in the rain mood, in the, in the night vibe. Uh, and we'll do that in honor of the uh, recent lunar eclipse that we just had yesterday uh, or last night. Early this morning, actually, was today, but I was not awake. Uh, <laughs> and we've got some other stuff. I'll get to your questions a little bit later. Thanks for being here. And uh, I'm going to play a little more, and then we'll go over and, and get, to the, get to the interview. Gonna go over to the desk and we're gonna get started. Let's go. Stop the rain and the chimes, even though isn't that nice? I wanna, I might save this. I'd like to fall asleep to that. All right, welcome everybody. Uh, let's go over to the desk and I've got a couple things for you that I wanna get to right away. All right, folks. Um, welcome back, and um, thanks to, I want to say right away, thanks to Roseanne for moderating, as usual, helping you guys um, with some questions. And if you ask questions at any point, hopefully she will feed them over to me um, so I don't miss them. That's the thing I don't want to do is miss anything because we're live. And this is a great opportunity for everyone here to uh, ask questions, make requests, do all that. We'll do as much as we can, of course, in the moment. But if you have questions and requests, just ask them anyway, because we'll put that in the next week. That's kind of how we're, how we're doing this. There's this blue light coming from my, coming from my microphone preamp. <laughs> That's what that is. This is blue light. I'm going to leave it on. It's kind of cool, I think. It's like coming from the from the logo up in the corner. All right, um, so coming up, I've got an interview that I did with a drummer. He's out in Maryland, and um, I just want to, I'm gonna play you the interview. I don't have to tell you too much about it, but I do want to say that Andrew Toy is doing some amazing stuff. Uh, he's, playing, he's playing drum set mostly, but this would apply to any percussion, and he does use some world percussion. I mean, it's all, it's all drums and percussion. It's all stuff that we can play, we can all play. And I would encourage any of you, even if you're more into hand drumming, 
to start to, you know, you can incorporate symbols, ride symbols, crash symbols, um, hi-hats or shit, you know, some sort of foot pedal thing, like a little bass drum. I've got the farmer foot drum, bass drum back here I use sometimes. So, you know, it's not an either or. There's plenty of room to cross over and overlap and just use anything you want to make music. That's, it's up to you. Use whatever you, whatever you want. There's no, there are no limits. So, um, so what Andrew's doing, you know, I want to give you a little bit of a setup because you may not get this from the interview. It goes by pretty quick. There's a lot of information there. So what you're going to see is Andrew talking about how he makes music on the drums. He's playing live. You'll get that. But then what he's doing is he's f putting everything through mics into the computer. And then in the computer, he's got this Ableton Live software, which is a very popular recording software, but specifically for people who like to do live looping. And you can record yourself, you know, into the program and it will play loops. And then you can also create things like these envelopes, which are certain types of filters and they're dynamic and they will change the sound. So as you listen to the clips, you're going to hear his sound and it'll sound like it's being, you know, run through a synthesizer or something. It'll sound kind of spacey and weird. And that's on purpose, of course. And that's part of the effect. And what he's doing is he's He's looping and he's playing with these effects and he's doing it all very organically and pretty much live, even though he presets up just like I do in my looper. I preset, you know, certain things like loop length and some effects and things uh, because you don't want to do everything in the moment from scratch. That's not realistic, but he, that's what he's doing. So all the stuff you're going to hear is him with the computer using the software in conjunction with the drum set. All right. So here we go. This is my a brief interview and there's a longer uh, video that will be for patrons um, if you want to see more about how he does all this stuff, and he'll, we'll mention that afterwards. But here it is. Enjoy. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to World Drum Club. I'm super excited to uh, introduce you all to an amazing drummer, percussionist, and um, artist, composer, Andrew Toy. Andrew, thanks for joining us. Thanks so much for having me. It's my pleasure. So you're out there in Virginia, is that right? East Coast? No, uh, Maryland. Oh. I'm just oh, uh, Maryland. general area. I'm, I'm in the D.C. area, um, just outside of D.C. on the Maryland side. Oh, on the Maryland side. Okay. All right. Well, East Coast meets West Coast in this uh, yes. World Drum Club interview. <laughs> so tell everybody briefly, you know, what is it that you do on the drums and with other stuff? Sure. Um, I'll, I'll try to do the, the short version. So I, I've, I've drummed all my life, like probably most of your uh, subscribers and listeners, drum sets, rock music, you know, going through school, all, all that sort of thing. But I've also, like probably a lot of your audience, branched out into world percussion, but also into uh, more technology kind of side of things, really diving deep into Ableton Live, uh, live effect processing, live looping. So all those things sort of came together with my own solo work, which started maybe five, six years ago as kind of a curiosity, kind of a little challenge to myself, like, can, can this work? Can this be interesting? But that's since uh, just grown and grown and grown in a nice sort of organic way. And especially with the pandemic, you know, there's no better, there was no better time to work on solo music than at home uh, for long stretches. So what I do in like kind of the core of... Um, a lot of what I do in recordings, but also in, in live shows when I'm doing my solo music, is taking acoustic drums, acoustic percussion, uh, weird sounds, little metal pieces, whatever, and routing it through, in my case, Ableton Live, and automating effects on, on, on these sounds. So acoustic sounds, digital treatment, and then also maybe automating looping, things like that. So instead of stepping around on pedals or fiddling with, with a laptop, as long as I have these arrangements that I've made ahead of time, I can just kind of step through them uh, one at a time, pressing one button on a MIDI controller, and go through to different sounds, different looping structures, and it can really be as sort of simple or as complex as, as we make it. So like I said, this really started to grow and grow and grow. Uh, I like doing the live shows, mostly in the DC area right now where I'm playing acoustic drums, but all the sounds, everything is coming from uh, just just that, just the, the live sounds, but being processed and, and turned into something that maybe sounds nothing like its original sound live. 
So that's kind of the, the gist of what I do in a, in a solo setting. Awesome. Yeah. And one of the things that I noticed in listening to some of your music, and by the way, everybody, he, you know, Andrew has some videos that you can, you guys can all access uh, online. One of the things that I really appreciated about the music was that it was organic. It was very much, uh, it's a, it's a, I guess you could say that you're setting up scenes and opportunities, but then what you do in those, in those scenes is you're kind of improvising, you're jamming, and you're setting up with the computer help, you're processing your own sounds, creating loops, creating textures, and then, you know, playing on top of that. So it's, it's really interesting to me. It's not just looping. It's more than that. Can you talk a little bit about the synthesis aspect? And I know we've got some clips that we're going to drop in a little bit later, but what, you know, for somebody who doesn't have any idea what sure. we're talking about right now, I know it's hard to, to understand this through words, but as best you can, maybe a, just a synopsis of kind of what's going on in the in the inner workings. Sure. So, I mean, you hit the nail on the head of like setting up a, a structure. So what I do uh, on kind of the tech side uh, before I even play a note is setting up these structures, whether it's um, looping where, you know, I, I wanted to loop in certain ways and creating layers of different loops. And that can be an infinite number. Um, usually four is a good maximum for me. Um, and then the same thing, setting up structures with, with effects where, you know, when I start a scene, a certain effect kicks on, or maybe it goes in sort of, um, you know, it comes in waves and maybe an envelope kind of happens in a certain time kind of way. So the sounds are all live. A couple of stray samples here and there, but generally everything is coming from, from a live source. That to me makes it a lot more exciting than if I just press a button and backing tracks start to play. So I wanted to find that nice balance of, you know, live improvisation, um, what you would see like maybe in a jazz setting where the, the chart might be the same every night, you know, the same lead sheet, the same chord changes, but it's going to be a little bit different every time it's played. Every player is going to do it a little bit differently. Uh, so the structures that I set up for, for my music, every time I play it, it's a little bit different. And that to me keeps it exciting, you know, instead of just hitting some samples and, and hit and go. So... It was really like that sort of like the synthesis, like you say, of live acoustic improvisational kind of things and maybe a little bit more scripted sort of uh, production type things. So just trying to find that sweet spot between those like electro and acoustic sort of sort of things. Yes. And now we're going to hear an example of what we've been talking about, because I know you guys are probably wondering what do all these words mean? What is an envelope? What's a filter? What is blah, blah, blah. I know it's a lot of stuff that, you know, if you're into uh, digital signal processing, some of you out there probably have a digital audio workstation. You know what plugins are, you know what, you know, but if you don't, uh, here's an example. <laughs> So I was going to China a lot doing teaching over there. And boy, did I see a lot of drum set karaoke, for lack of a better term, right? Just people playing with play along tracks. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? It's a great way to learn. I mean, I started off learning when I was in uh, middle school, high school. I would put on, you know, the Boston album, one of the greatest rock albums ever created, right? Boston. And I would just play along. And it's a great way to learn. It's a great way to, you know, build your chops, build your confidence, have fun. Um, but what we're doing again, everybody, I want to reiterate that this is, this is a performance that is, uh, created in the moment. And I like that comparison, Andrew, that you made to like a chart. You, you've got kind of a basic map laid out, but then whatever you do from day to day, from night to night, you know, performance to performance, it's going to be unique. And that's the thing. And you're also, so that it's affected by your mood, you know, how you feel, you know, that day, what, what, okay. And, and maybe something you 
are thinking about it, you know, that happened earlier in the day. And you bring all that into your into your performances. So talk a little bit about where can people find you? Where can they see you? Where can they check all this stuff out and get to know you a little bit more? Sure. So the best place is my website. It's Andrew Toy, Andy, R-A-W-T-O-Y dot net. Um, and that, that, that'll that point you to my um, social media, to all the streaming sites, everything like that. And uh, I did put out last year my first debut uh, solo album. And that was sort of started because of and maybe inspired by uh, the early stage of the pandemic. So so that was recorded throughout 2020 and, and everything like that. Uh, so yeah, um, andrewtoy.net, all the uh, social media is a toy drummer is my handle on those. Oh, that works out. <laughs> <laughs> Easy to spell. All right. And that's awesome. And so you guys go connect, go check it out. Cause what Andrew's doing is really, I, you know, I, and we say this a lot, but it really is cutting edge. It's really different and unique than what a lot of other people are doing. And it's not that, you know, he's not the only one doing this type of thing, but I'd say, you, you know, you've definitely got your own voice and your own style of doing it, which is, I think so important in today's world, because there's a lot of people, you know, just doing what other people are doing. And again, nothing wrong with that. That's how we learn. That's how we build a genre even, but, but to be at the kind of cutting edge, the front edge of something is exciting. And as a tech head myself, I love both the organic and the technical. And I think you've done a really beautiful job of combining those and keeping it artistic and keeping it musical, you know, and, and groovy <laughs> and musical, right? I mean, that's because at the end of the day, we're making music. We're trying to make music, right? We're trying to move people. Uh, with something artistic. So for um, for patrons, for people, if you want to see a little more, like really like how to do some of this stuff, and Andrew's got some walkthrough videos that we're going to share over over there and a little bit on YouTube. But uh, for those of you who are more curious, come check it out at patreon.com slash Kalani, World Drum Club. Andrew Toy, thank you so much for, for meeting with us today. My pleasure, Kalani. Thanks for having me. So I'm going to go do a instrument feature for you right now on this instrument because I know you guys are wondering, what is that? I want that. <laughs> All right. So this is, the, this is a different kind of hand pan, and this is from Metal Sounds made in France, and they call their hand pans space drums. I wonder why. Um, here's the bottom. Looks like a typical hand pan. Really nice. Um, this, though, I want to talk about a second because this is a little, little bit different model. Some of you have seen the one that I have um, that's the bronze colored one, and that one's actually a little bigger than this, although they still have the same number of notes, which is nine. But this one is called the Nitro, and I'm not getting paid to say this, but they did send this to me, so I, and I'm appreciative of that. And um, so I'll tell you how you can get your hands on one. Uh, if you want, but I just want to show you the instrument real quick. It's going to be quick. This one they call the nitro and it's a little smaller, a little tighter sound. It's a little more dry and it's kind of more what they uh, think of as percussive oriented, right? As opposed to long ringing notes where everything kind of gets washed together. This one uh, is, it's quicker, even though it's still pretty, still pretty long sustain. It's a D minor scale, starting on uh, D, and then it goes down uh, to, I'm sorry, A. It starts on A. So that's an octave, and then you have a D here. But there is a B flat uh, also, so I believe that's what it is. I could be wrong. No, I don't know what it is. I already did a video on this, a short one. <laughs> I did a short. Uh, it's nine notes, and uh, it's in D minor, and I was, so I was playing the flute in D minor, and I want to show you two other instruments really quick. So that's space drum, nitro, hand pan, D minor. You can get that from weplaywelltogether.com. As you can, this instrument, which is what I started the show with, and this is like 
uh, it's a chime and it's similar to the Koshi chimes, which is over here. Let me grab this one. So let me give you a little background. This is a Koshi chime. I know, right? Crazy. So, but I didn't play that one today. I played this one, which is similar, but this is a Zephyr chime. Also amazing. Um, and they come in different tunings. Go to We Play Well Together if you're interested. That's a Zephyr chime. Very cool. You just don't want to stop playing it. One more quick thing I used in the uh, in the intro music, and I wanted to share this with you because I I like I'm kind of into playing a lot of things that are tuned together these days, and so I have this Peisty. Um, this is called a cup chime. This thing's old. I've had this like 30 years or something. Let me see if I can get it in the overhead so you can just see it a little bit better. So this is called a cup chime. It's just like a symbol. It looks like kind of a normal symbol. But here's the thing that I discovered. I got on my tuner and I discovered that it's actually a, a slightly sharp A, but it's close enough. It's not exact, but that's pretty cool that it's an A. So if I put lots of reverb on, I was just excited about that because I discovered that today. So there it is, you guys. I, I was integrating that. A is, of course, the fifth, the fifth degree of the scale of D minor. So it just blends right in. Pretty cool. I love that when that works out. So now I know that that little cup chime, which, like I said, I've had for many, many, many years. Um, now I got it out, and I'm so happy I can play with A flutes and D flutes and other stuff. Um, yeah, so that's that's pretty fun. So um, the chime, not the cup chime, the cup chime is Peisty. That's a 2002 model, and I believe that's an eight inch, yeah, eight inch cup chime. I don't think you can request them tuned to notes, but maybe you can, I don't know. And then this is a Zephyr chime. This is the D minor tuning, and then that actually goes with the hand pan. I'm so excited. This is all so cool. All right, we're gonna go back over, and I've got another musical game for you guys. Like I like I said, and this one is it's it's one that I like. It's not it's not rhythmic, but it, it asks you to really tune in to sound, and just it's great for I would say even crossing over into mindfulness. And by the way, I have a really nice reading for you today. A la Music Mindfulness, we're bringing that theme back in a little, as it was like a request from last week. So I'm, uh, yes, I'm, I'm answering you guys, your requests. How about that? That's kind of why we do this. All right, so we're going to go back over to the desk and continue over there. Just a second. Okay. By the way, the thing that fell earlier um, is this little PVC pipe that I have on my key light, which is the, key, the light that shines over here that gives, you know, the little highlight. You, you kind of need that for video. And I have this little tube on it, and I just sh shoved it on. It's like a Home Depot aluminum clip-on light, and I just shoved the thing over the light bulb. It wasn't even attached. I just It falls out, and I just shove it back up there. And of course, it fell out like right in the beginning of the show, you know. Maybe it's the rain. I don't know. Um, all right. So let's, let me get my message app open. Okay. Um, I have a musical game. And this one, I'm just going to play the video because I talk about the whole thing in the video. So uh, this is called Ships in the Night. It comes from the drum fun thing. I'll, I'll tell you about that in a second. But check it out. Uh, I give the instructions up front and you'll see everybody doing the game 
pretty self-explanatory. I will say that um, before this video started, before the part that you're going to see, I had everybody pair up. I had each pair of people choose a unique instrument from a bunch of instruments that I made available. So each pair has a different sound, all right? U a unique sound. Um, and that's important if you're gonna try to replicate this game. Uh, everybody has to have a unique sound and you'll see why in a second. So this is called Ships in the Night. Okay, so this is called Ships in the Night. And what we're gonna do is we have half of you are gonna be the navigators. And you're acting like the buoy that the ship is gonna to use to navigate safely through the water because it's very dark. And those of you that are the ships, you can't see anything. So you'll have your eyes closed, of course. It's very foggy, very dark, you can't see anything. All you can do is hear the navigation tools, you know, and, and actually maritime traditions, we use percussion instruments, gongs and bells, sometimes horns in the buoys that are near the coast. And those are the things that the ships use. So we're going to be using percussion instruments. Now you've all paired off and you've all selected a unique instrument between the two of you. So each of you will have a different sound. And those of you that are ships, you can make a little bow in the front. This might hit Keep, help keep you safe if you happen to bump into another ship. But the goal of this is for all of you navigators to watch your ship and make sure they don't run into any trouble. All right? And that includes running into other navigators. <laughs> so we want to be mindful of the space, look around you. We just want to keep all the ships safe and get them back to their ports. Ships, you're going to travel at a constant speed. And remember that you can be far away from your navigator. Your navigators can be far away. And for the navigators, see how long you can let your ship go in one direction before you change their course. And of course, to change the course, you just have to be at a different point in the room, okay? So let's start off by finding some space in the room. Get your ships, if you're a ship, get ready to sail, and if you're a navigator, you can move away from your ship. Let's all start with a little space around us. And we'll just go for a little, a little bit of time here. And begin when you're ready. Bring your ships back to your back to port. And as I mentioned earlier, that is from the Drum Fung collection, and that collection is available at uh, Patreon for patrons at the courses level. If you think you might have a use for rhythm games, uh, musical games, I use them a lot. And that's why I'm sharing them with you guys like one a week here, but there's like 20, over 20 games. Um, 
in the collection, and I've collected those from all over, different people, different workshops that I've been to, and then I usually will modify them or create ways of presenting them that are unique to my style, just like you could do. If So if you're a facilitator, a teacher, a trainer, a coach, a consultant, and you want to do something with um, kind of musical, and you don't need instruments for a lot of these. Some of them, you probably want to have instruments. But actually, when I first learned this one that I call Ships in the Night, I don't remember what the gentleman who showed it to me and the group I was with, but that was at a um, expressive arts therapy gathering. Uh, and we just use our voices. So everybody's voice is unique, right? Everybody's voice has different uh, pitch, formats, timbre, qualities. And so we just did it with voices and you can pick one word and partner people up. And it's really interesting. You do need quite a bit of space to do this. I wouldn't recommend doing this unless you have a lot of space to move around. You want to make sure people aren't running into stuff and hurting themselves, of course. But you guys know that because you're, you have common sense. All right. So if you, if you're interested in that um, kind of thing and, you know, as well as the other courses that we have available on drums and percussion and drum circles and stuff, you can, Get a hold of that at patreon.com uh, slash Kalani. It's right down here, boop, in the screen. All right. Hey, I want to thank everybody um, for being here. We're going to do uh, a reading, and then we're going to do Q&A, and then we're going to wrap up. So we're, we're rounding. I guess we rounded second base. I don't know. Not a huge baseball fan, but I, congratulations to whoever won the World Series. Somebody just won. I know that. Um, before we do that, though, before we get to the reading, um, we did have a, a comment from Cornelius. And look what I have, Cornelius. Check it out. From 1993. So um, I actually did a, a, a short series. I did a little stint on a channel that I don't have anymore called Reflections of Yanni. And I and the idea was I, I talked about, you know, my time with Yanni on the road and touring and re doing some recording and traveling. And so I was thinking about doing a little segment called Reflections of Yanni um, on the Tuesday Muse Day. But I don't know if that's something everybody's interested in. But I think if I just talk about it from a musical perspective, maybe a little gossip. Everybody likes a little a little dirt now. And that. No, I wouldn't do that. Um, but this is this is a program. I'll just show it to you quickly. This is a program from the Yanni Live Tour, 1993. Maybe we'll we'll do a page a week. <laughs> but if you're a fan, you probably have this already. One thing that you could count on. Now I know you can't read this, but there he is. There's a man, the hair, the mustache, the white the white um, outfit, which I don't think he does anymore. Right? He doesn't do the he doesn't do the white. He's gone to the dark side. <laughs> um, to answer your question in general, oh, there he is. There's a, he's got it covered. White stallion, uh, black stallion. All right. To answer your question, though, I am super grateful for the opportunity to play with Yanni and all the musicians in the band. It was really a life-changing experience for me. It was my first major gig. I had had some other tours before that, but nothing on that level, of course. And it didn't hurt to have Linda Evans kind of there supporting at the time. Linda, also beautiful person, really gracious, lovely. Um, the thing, the big takeaway, besides just having a really great job for the four years that I played with Yanni, was travel. Um, I got to see a lot of places, including internationally, you know, of course, uh, live at the Acropolis. So Greece was amazing. And and then, um, of course, the people in the band who I'm still friends with, uh, Bradley Joseph, Karen Briggs, Julie Homey. Um, I'm, I'm not really in touch with Charlie, the drummer, too much, but we Facebook friend every now and then. Um, and, uh, you know, Amy Shiatani, which is one of the early keyboard players, Charlie Bishrat, uh, the one of the early violinists. Um, and, uh, yeah, just great people all around. Um, Maybe if I do a little more, if I do segments on this, you know, you guys can ask questions and I'll, I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, but it was, it was great. It was great to play with Yanni. Um, yeah, financially, it was, it was a big step up for me. Um, 
of course, uh, in terms of just profile, you know, it was nice. All right. So we're going to move on. And I've got a reading for you guys that is from uh, one of the just a renowned author who I hope you guys all all know. Um, and uh, this is not a music book, although it, it does have a lot of connection to uh, things that music has in common with uh, a lot of things, which are beauty and art and spirituality. And, um, and so to me, there's a, there's a connection here, and I hope this resonates with you. And the book is none other than uh, The Prophet by Khalil Gibran, uh, who, where I actually was really close to uh, where, he, where he lived in Lebanon uh, one year, also a music a music trip. And uh, see, music takes you all over the world. You know, you guys keep practicing. Um, so I, I am just going to read a short couple paragraphs from the, I don't even know if I call it a chapter, you know, he just has these little vignettes throughout the book. And this one is on religion. And um, the theme is, is kind of like peace today, because I feel like today's election day in the U.S. at least. I know some of you aren't in the U.S., but we're having a big day, and, uh, and we need peace. <laughs> we, need, we need peace. And, you know, all over the world, there's things going on where people hopefully are hoping for peace. And so I'm just putting this out there. It does relate to music, I think. And so, um, yeah, let's do the reading, and uh, I'll see you back here in a second. All right, we're just going to go to the slide, and uh, I'll, I'll be right back. So this is on um, page 78 and 79, for those of you who have a copy. And uh, I'm going to start here. The freest song comes not through bars and wires. And he to whom worshiping is a window to open, but also to shut, has not yet visited the house of his soul, whose windows are far from dawn to, whose windows are from dawn to dawn. Your daily life is your temple and your religion. Whenever you enter into it, take with you your, your all. Take the plow and the forge and the mallet and the lute. The things you have fashioned in necessity or for delight. For in reverie, you cannot rise above your achievements nor fall lower than your failures. And take with you all men, for in adoration, you cannot fly higher than their hopes nor humble yourself lower than their despair. And if you would know God, be not therefore a solver of riddles, rather, Look about you, and you shall see him playing with your children. And look into space. You shall see him walking in the cloud, outstretching his arms in the lightning and descending in rain. You shall see him smiling in the flowers, then rising and waving his hands in trees. And so, my friends, um, there's a f- couple takeaways from this. And if you haven't read it, do yourself a favor. Um, so what, what he's talking about there is that, that your spirituality, your practice, your music, everything is not compartmentalized. It doesn't happen in a place, in one way. Um, and it's, it's basically happening everywhere. It's a message that many enlightened spiritual teachers have echoed throughout the centuries, you know, it's not about the place, it's not about the clothing, it's not about the songs even, as much as we like, you know, music. And spiritual and religious music is some of the best, you know, that there is. It's because it's where the money is, you guys. <laughs> um, but the point is, is that, you know, God is Zen everything, right? God is Zen everything. That was a shirt I saw. It was a great shirt. Um, yeah, so that's all. I like to uh, integrate what I think of as mindfulness practice, just spirituality. I know I've read um, kind of a fan of Taoism. Um, I mean, I take from 
everything. You know, any any good idea is a good idea. I don't really care where it comes from. And uh, but one of the things I try to do is to just integrate spirituality in my practice in the everyday, in the in the everything I do, just because it's all it's all good and it all deserves our attention. Everything you any, everything you do. Not, there's nothing that's more special than anything else. Everything is spe- super special, and life is a su- super special gift. And I think just appreciating that, remembering that, is um, one of the best ways that we can give ourselves the level of regard and reverence and appreciation uh, that we all deserve and that we can give each other because we all deserve that re- reverence and respect and high regard. Um, so let's do Q&A for a second. If you have any cues, I will not do any cue anons, but if you have any regular questions, uh, there was a question from earlier about listening to Bata music. Now, I am not an expert. I'm not an ethnomusicologist. Um, I would imagine what I can do is say that historically speaking, the music played on the Batas, which is for the religion of Santaria, which is a combination of West African and um Catholicism from Spain. It, it's complicated, but for a long time, as with a lot of religions, the music was uh, played by men and it was it was kind of, uh, you know, there was a lot of things that were forbidden for women to do. And there were a lot of, a lot of the music was forbidden to outsiders. Um, so people that were not uh, in the religion uh, initiated, especially the music that was done for the Orishas or for the saints um, for the spirits uh, in that religion. And again, I'm not trying to educate anybody as to the particulars of Santeria or the Bata music. What I would say is it's similar to, you know, a lot of cultures have music that is what you could call sacred, right? Or very special or ritualistic or for certain times and for certain people at certain times. And while I don't think you're going to hurt yourself if you're listening to it, um, one thing we don't want to do is appropriate music, um, use it, use it inappropriately, uh, treat it disrespectfully, or what would be disrespectful to those people. Uh, that that's something that I think we all can be mindful of. We all want to be uh, careful and respectful. So if if you are interested in in any music from any culture, I think you want to start off with questions. You want to find people who are knowledgeable. You want to listen to them and respect what they say with in that regard, you know, with something that is culturally sensitive and also something that is very sensitive in a lot of cultures, which is people's religious practices. So um, that being said, there are people that teach music, the music of the Bata. There are now women playing and teaching the music of the Bata who have the respect of, of men um, because they're artists and they're playing the music. And um, so things change over time. So when we talk about music and traditions, sometimes we're talking historically and it's not, you know, nothing is locked in a capsule and nothing stays the same. Everything changes, everything evolves. There, there is a, such a thing as cultural blending and cultural sharing. Um, it's not always a case of misappropriation to, to be interested in or study or pl- even play Music from a, a culture that is outside of your own. Um, most people I know that are playing music from within a, a certain culture are happy to share it and happy for others to learn about it. So that that's what I would say. We could open this up uh, another time for more discussion. But I think the, the um, idea of cultural, I like to say misappropriation. I think that gets to the idea of what is actually we want to be careful about, um, not misappropriation, but whether you want to say misappropriation or mis or, or um, cultural appropriation or cultural misappropriation, <laughs> that's up to you. Um, but it's just a matter of being respectful, and um, yeah, not just taking things because we can buy them, uh, and not just you know taking something out of context uh, and using it in a way that could be harmful or disrespectful to the originating culture. That's all. All right. Any questions? Uh, so, and we can, if you guys have any questions, you know, as we wrap up, we're going to wrap up pretty quick here. Uh, but please, you know, you can send 
you can send, uh, you can put your message in, in now. If you think of something later that you'd like me to bring up uh, in the future, then you can email me uh, through my website. Actually, I'll send you to kalanimusic.com. There's a form there, email form. Uh, you can you can go to my very outdated website and contact me through that form, which is what a lot of people do. I'm happy to answer questions. I get you know different kinds of questions all the time from people, from everything from asking about gear to educational things to where can I get your DVD or your video or your book, which much of which is not in print anymore. <laughs> but that's why we have the Patreon. So let me just wrap up with a plug for uh, myself. And that would have to do with how we're funding all this stuff, which is Patreon. It's the Patreon, uh, which some of you are patrons, and I really appreciate that. But you can go there uh, and and join and then you'll you'll join us for things like the percussion hang we have uh, live zoom events and you get to meet you know different artists and some of you have done that and sometimes people will will study with them and um it's it's pretty exciting to be, just connect people and that's that's kind of what world drum club is all about it's what i love to do um you know like we had andrew toy interview today and um, I, if that was something that you know sparked an interest in you guys, I think that's amazing. Uh, it's it's something that I would love to do more of, but I'm probably not going to have the time to to get that techie to to start a whole nother. Th I've got too many things going as it is. I'm trying to cut down on on some of the uh, interests that I have in the technology, but certainly um, it's 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 always really good to try new things. So. so uh, so Lacey had a question, how many drums and percussion instruments do you have? I have no idea. Um, I will say that, you know, it's not a crazy number. I, I have friends, like if you guys saw my interview with Brian Kilgore, who was my roommate in college, actually, uh, he's an LA studio percussionist. He has like, I, I want to say 20 plus cases full of stuff. And that's just in storage. That's just for sessions. And then he's got a whole bunch of stuff at, at his home studio. I mean, it's just hundreds and hundreds of instruments. Now, if you're counting every little thing, every little whistle, that's, you know, then it's, then I probably do have hundreds. But I would say, you know, main instruments, I'm probably under a hundred for sure. If I, you know, if you just count like drums, main, you know, larger instruments, not just little sound effects and things. But, um, you know, maybe a hundred or two total. And then I've got flutes though. I've got ukuleles. That's a whole nother area, but drums and percussion. Um, I've been kind of paring down last few years cause I'm not touring. I've, I sold some cases. I've sold extra stuff like stands and big racks and things that I used to use. I don't foresee using that stuff too much. So I'm just hanging on to a few things, you know, a few cymbal stands, a few drum stands, um, the conga stands come in really handy for the hand pan there. So, uh, but I'm, I'm trying to slim down, cut down and, uh, and get rid of stuff. So, Hey, you guys, you know, I might sell some stuff off and then patrons would get first dibs. So that's another reason you should become a patron. Um, I do appreciate you guys though. And I appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, so anything else? Let me see. I think, I think either I or Roseanne has answered a lot of your questions. Um, I want to acknowledge and thank Roseanne Musser again for, you know, just being here and hanging out. Um, Roseanne is a is a patron and super into all the percussion and flutes and other stuff, um, which I think is awesome. You know, just embracing all of everything. You know, I'll leave you guys with this. You know, even though I I call myself a percussionist, right? Percussionist drummer. But one of the things I hope you will entertain if you haven't already is the idea that you are a musician. Yes, drummers are musicians, in case you weren't sure. But, you know, I realize that, you know, maybe picking up a flute or an ukulele is seems intimidating. And maybe you think, well, I'm just I'm just into rhythm. I don't want to play that. So I don't need to play that stuff. Um, but the the people that you meet in the different you know, circles. I mean, drummers are awesome. I love them. All the flute friends I have, though, amazing. 
the ukulele friends and, and, you know, people that play stringed instruments. Amazing. So not only do you expand your, your world of people that you're in touch with and, and look, I mean, life is our relationships, right? The quality of your life is about the quality of your relationships and the quality of your emotions uh, that you have every day. So I would encourage you to uh, explore one or the other, maybe get an ukulele or get a flute and just learn. It's, they're pretty easy, you guys. It's not, it's not a big deal. And then you've got rhythm. You've got the rhythm stuff down. Maybe you have a cajon, set of bongos, a conga, a djembe, and then you've got an ukulele and now you can play songs and you can accompany songs and you could be the person that, you know, plays for the, around the campfire or on a road trip or whenever, you know, it's a, it's an amazing thing to be able to just play a few chords and then people can sing because people love that. And then the flute you have for the melody uh, and the beauty uh, and the lyric, the lyrical, you know, floating melodies. And you guys heard at the top of the show how much that adds. And again, it's not that it's not that hard. I've got courses on that over at Patreon. So if you join at the courses level, you get all the drum stuff. You get all the ukulele. There's a whole ukulele course over there. There's a whole flute course over there. So there's lots of stuff that you can get into. You know, it's it's great. Sometimes you don't have room for a conga, but if you take a flute somewhere. You're making music, you can connect with uh, amazing people, and just you'd be surprised what you can do with a little bit of practice. And then you can have a bunch of instruments too uh, that you can't believe how many you bought. Right, Roseanne? So <laughs> we're going to sign off. You know, I appreciate you guys. Um, thanks, everyone, and stay tuned uh, and keep making music. You know, go out there, go play for some people who don't get out much. Uh, it's the holidays are coming up. Maybe you can find uh, some ways to volunteer and maybe visit some uh, older adults who don't get out and go make some music with them. Um, yeah, whatever you do, keep making music and have fun. I'll see you back here for another Tuesday Muse Day. Tell your friends, tell your fans, tell your family um, and uh, enjoy the rain <laughs> if you get some. Uh, I'm going to make sure we're not flooding outside. I don't think we are. We're, the rain's supposed to last another like six hours, and then we're, we're going to be good. All right. Thanks, everybody. I'll see you next time. And uh, thanks for tuning in to Tuesday Muse Day. <laughs>